Huawei launched many distinctive access switches this year. Data at the access layer flows to the core layer of the campus network, where core switches aggregate massive volumes of data of office, production, and operation services. But what makes an industry-leading core switch? Hello everyone, I'm Sam. Today, we're honored to have Mr. Yang Jiayuan, who's a director of Campus Switch, and also Lars, who's the CTO of Huawei Enterprise Solutions Sales Department, Middle East and Central Asia, with us to take a close look at Huawei's latest core switch, Cloud Engine S16700 series switches. Welcome, Lars. Hi, Sam. And welcome, Mr. Yang. Hi, Sam. As digitalization ramps up, Campus Networks have a growing number of services, devices, and users, and therefore they have higher bandwidth requirements. Now, Mr. Young, what changes does the S16700 bring to networks? Okay, so let's uh, take hospital as an example. So in the hospital networks, if the scan generates 400 imagines, it's very easy the speed comes to 1G to all of the imagines. In the traditional networks, the network is bandwidth insufficient. So the doctors will take a long time to check the uh, images from the scan. It will be take a long time for diagnosis. With our new switch, it will be easy to download all of the images. So this year, we launched the new models. We will have two models, that is 16700-4 and 16700-8. Dash 4 with a four service slot, Dash 8 with eight service slot. So our new models of 16700 will come to high speed, high performance, and uh, high reliability. So uh, one switch can support uh, 50,000 uh, users. So with one user, two terminals, we can support 100,000 terminals. So in the future, we, will, we can upgrade the speed to 400G. That means one port can support 400G. Uh, as an example, if we download HD movies, just one second, we can finish the downloading. So that is means our switch can support for the next 10 years uh, as a core switch. Now that's all really impressive, but what makes that possible? So to explain that, um, I need to talk about the architecture of the switch. So we have an innovative uh, multi-level orthogonal clause design for the switch. That means that in comparison with traditional switches, you have the control board, you have the LPU, you have the SFU, it's all connected to a backplane. With our design, we don't have that backplane. So all the cards are directly connected to each other. That means that not only from a speed perspective, and I will talk later on about also airflow, it is a very innovative design. With that, not having the backplane also gives you less attenuation when the high-speed signals are going through the cable. With a, with a traditional board, you have all the cables, you have that attenuation. Since we do not have the backplane, we can get more than 50% additional speed from the platform. So just as Loris explained, so our platform is very strong. If you need to upgrade the bandwidth speed, you just need to change a corresponding line card. So our platform with 16700 can support maximum 14.4 P per second uh, with one slot. So our uh, card can support 100 G and it can split to 25G and 10G. So with our line card, 40G also can upgrade to 100G with the RTU license. That is means our customer can uh, use uh, 100G speed as 40G price. And we all know the core network switches, they feature high speed, high density, and also high heat dissipation. Now, heat dissipation is key to the high performance of the S16700. So what are the secrets behind this? Well, uh, first of all, I, I already uh, talked about that a little bit. Um, it's the design, right? So the design, if you have no backplane, then you have an open design. Air can flow easily from the front to the back uh, to cool all the cars that are in there. So that is one of the key things that we've done with this design. Uh, secondly, uh, which is also very important for electrical components, that is how do you 
for the electric components, uh, most of them have, have a heat sink. The heat sink is essentially just, I, I, I would not call it stupid, but it's um, a simple way of getting the heat out of a chip or another uh, device. So what we have done is we have an innovative technology there that for heat dissipation, that is a solid state at first. If the heat goes higher, it becomes a liquid. If the heat becomes even higher than that, it becomes a vapor. Uh, with that, we can cool it down uh, by 19 degrees Celsius to make sure that we don't have overheating in the, uh, in the platforms. Last but not least is also how we have built the fans. So the, ben, uh, the fans are in a, uh, a vortex model, so similar like um, airplane motors. So the, the suction is much higher than you would get with a normal fan. And that also uh, is being used in the platform so we can have that additional uh, heat dissipation based on the fans as well. So without doubt, such performance would not be possible without a powerful power supply. So do we have any unique features in the power supply design? Uh, yes, it's a good question. So in our new platform, we have the industry unique uh, dual power input. So with the uh, power modules, we have two lines uh, for the input. We have the intelligent uh, switching uh, functions. So if one line is fault, uh, we intelligently switch to another line with just a millisecond. You didn't wear anything, it already changed to another line. Besides this, we also have some new technologies. Uh, this new power supply we call uh, compact powerful uh, power module. That is, means uh, we were 90 percentage higher power supply efficiency, but the space will decrease uh, 50 percentage. So that is means uh, if you have 10 power supply, but the efficiency is just like uh, 20 power supplies as before. So with the new power supply, we just uh, need two sums of space. We can provide 1060 watt with the new power supply modules. So reliability is crucial to the campus core network. Now, Bas, what achievements have we made in terms of reliability assurance? That's a good question, Sam. So if you look at the design, what I was talking about, the orthogonal design, that uh, enables us to, um, to have a redundancy in the forwarding. So we're using SFUs. We do a N plus one um, uh, architecture for the SFUs. Uh, secondly, it's also separate from the control. So that means that even if something happens with a control, a failover with control or anything else, there's no impact on the forwarding in the platform. Um, all of the other components, so the, the main control board, also the SFUs as well, um, uh, the fans, all of that work in a, um, let's say, an active standby. So there's always a failover method in the platform for any of the components. So Lars, you were just telling us about the hardware reliability. So what are we doing in terms of network reliability? Uh, very, very good question, uh, Sam. So you can have as much as hardware redundancy. If you don't design it well, if you don't have the right protocols on your platforms, then you still have an issue. So uh, take, for example, high precision manufacturing. Um, if anything goes wrong there, even if you do a box upgrade, but you lose network connectivity for some time, that's going to cost a lot of money. So in traditional networks, however, are built like that. You don't have that um, proper redundancy in the network. We tried, but um, as an example for stacking, there's some, some issues there. We'll get back to that. What we've done is we've introduced MLAC into our platform. Now, MLAC is a technology where you can um, essentially use the boxes as a single box, which was, like I said, done with stacking. However, the benefit is that you have separate control platform. So two platforms have their own control. Stacking, for instance, uh, it's one control. So if that control goes down, you have an interruption. So with MLAC, I have two boxes, uh, two platforms. If one uh, platform goes down, no impact. If I need to upgrade one of the platforms, no impact. Because from a control perspective, they're two separate. So that is where from a design and from a network perspective, you can have a lot of benefit from uh, MLAC technology, for instance. And I hear that MLAG can actually achieve reliability of six nines. 
Yeah, so besides, uh, Larry said, the network reliability is so important. But besides that, the, the user's quality and the use the network experience is also another topic. As a core switch, we will carry a lot of service. So like a bank, uh, we have the email, we have the video conference, we also have the bank transition uh, service. It's the core uh, service of the bank. So in such kind of customers, uh, we can provide the network slicing uh, functions. So we can divide the, the user's traffic for different services, like I said, emails or core service. So if we use the network sli slicing for the high quality or low latency and uh, high uh, speed, for this kind of service, we can use network slicing. With these functions, we can guarantee the user's bandwidth, user's latency, and uh, we can guarantee the experience of the service. At the same time, we can also uh, improve the efficiency of the ONM. It will be easy to maintain the service. And SRV6, I understand Huawei used to only have it on the high-end routers, but now it's available on the switches, which is really impressive. Yeah, so SRV6 normally as a router functions, but now we can spot in the core switch. Uh, as we know, the VAN network is provided a line to the enterprise. So core switch like the end of this one network. So we can provide the SRV6 end to end from the van to the LAN. So it will be transfer the, the traffic from the van network to the campus network. As a course switch, we also can support these functions. Mr. Yang, Lars, thank you for sharing your thoughts and insights. For sure, digitalization requires future-proof campus core networks with higher bandwidth, as well as larger capacity and more robust reliability. With ultra-large capacity, lightning-fast speed, and ultimate reliability, it's clear that Huawei's S16700 series core switches are ideal for customers to build future-proof, high-quality 10-giga campus networks. So anyway, large.